Looking at international markets now, the decision by the Fed did spook uh, markets but at first, but it looks like things are coming back. What did you make of that decision? Did they overreact? Morning, I, I like to think of their market participants and not investors because if you're flip-flopping so much, it means you probably don't have a longer-term view. I think so. I think join the dots, though, because the Chinese have been putting in uh, other measures in the background happening, and I guess maybe the Fed thought, okay, well, we have to do something. But it's just, to put it into perspective, in September 2008, the interbank rate, the TED spread, the, the, the rate at which the banks lend to each other and short-term treasuries was at something like 460 basis points. And it had shrunk in, in, in you know, over, over the months after the crisis, after we, we knew there was a lot of liquidity in the system from the Fed, to 0.15. So it literally gone from a period of absolute fear where banks wouldn't lend to each other to a period now where people are a lot more comfortable with who the counterparty was. And that, that was all the fear back in those days was who you had exposure to, who your counterparty risk was to. So for the Fed to raise the rate at which they lend to the banks by 25 basis points, do I think people overreacted? Absolutely, yeah. But do I think they're on the right track? Yes. And, and I think most importantly, people are worried that all these stimulatory measures um, are going to lead to inflation. So having seen an inflation read come in below people's expectations, they're all completely thrilled, uh, these investors, these <laughs> short-term market participants. So I think uh, anxieties haven't gone out the window very quickly, but it's still the market's still very, very skittish. You know, even 18 months after uh, you know, the world was supposed to fall over, we, we're at a point now where people are perhaps getting a little bit more confidence. And it's a great thing when you click into a new year, but also it's even better when you start measuring against a, a rubbish quarter last year. And that's what you're going to see in some of these GDP reads because. You know, the, 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 the Q4 um, of 2008, when we're going to measure in 2009, is markedly better, simply because the world stared at the edge of the cliff and we've stepped back a few steps and, and in fact people have perhaps turned their back. But could this decision lead to an increase in benchmark rates though? It will. Ultimately it has to. You can't stay at these low um, rates forever, unless you're Japan, of course. You know, I mean, you can't stay at between 0 and 0.25% 0 forever. They need to find a level that um, but they, they'll only get to that level once they're comfortable that growth is in place. And, and jobs is key and housing is key. So we're going to see housing data and of course we see jobs data on a week by week basis. Last week those initial claims disappointed a little bit. I think the overall number is starting to come down. So ultimately people are feeling a lot more comfortable now than where they were even six to nine months ago. Um, and do I think uh, global economic recovery is intact? In parts of the world, most certainly. I think uh, you know, Europe and the UK are going to struggle for a little while. And those issues are still highlighted on a daily basis, you know, the pigs issues. So I, th I, th I think there was, there's a lot of anxiety in that area. Uh, in Asia, everyone's comfortable that, that um, the Chinese and the Indians and, and even areas of Southeast Asia or, or, or building momentum and, and interestingly people are starting to say to themselves well this is where I have to be and, and we luckily as South Africa and Africa as a continent fall into that category. Okay. And the dollar will increase by, a, it hit an eight month high, what is likely to drive it this week? Probably the same concerns as last week okay. you know, um, say for instance if the, if the Greeks do come to some sort of a uh, or if the European Union do come to some sort of a conclusion on how they're going to fund the short-term flows that the Greeks need and they believe the Greeks' plans, there's still a mere matter of Portugal and Spain. Um, so, you know, they're going to have to address those issues at some stage too. So it's probably more about people having an aversion to the euro rather than absolute dollar strength at this point. So probably same old, same old this week, although you know, having watched markets for a long time, you know that nothing is ever in one direction and eventually it will snap at some stage. Whether or not that's at, you know, some currency experts reckon somewhere around 132 to uh, the dollar euro cross, we'll have to wait and see for that. And looking at the local currency now, I mean, it, uh, um, it, it found some well, it, it fr after the budget, the RAND found some strength, but it did come uh, under pressure given that decision um, by the Fed. Do you think, what, what type of range is it likely to trade in this week? The RAND will, will, will trade w with where the dollar trades. So if you think the dollar is going to perhaps firm up during the week, 
Having said that, though, however, I mean, there are st some strong fundamentals that would unpin underpin us in the short term, you know, like rising commodity prices. That's always good for, for South Africa. And what will be key will be that uh, Q4 GDP read. I think that, that'll be key. And, that, you know, the same applies for the U.S. So watching currencies and watching these short-term flows is like watching a football match or watching a rugby match. You know, there are ebbs and flows during the day, as long as your team wins though, at the end. How much of an impact will the quarter four GDP have on the RAND? I think the US one probably, you know, a lot more important than ours, um, even if there's just a short term knee jerk reaction in terms of, our, but if we meet expectations, and I think expectations somewhere around two and a half percent growth, which is shocking to think Africa is growing at uh, such a rapid rate or is expected to grow, um, I think yeah, I, th I think you'll probably see a fairly muted response from markets if we're kind of in the range where people expect.